This video from Pony Express will focus on the PonePad 2014. This is the Nexus 7 tablet, specifically the 2013 edition or second gen edition. And with the, uh, the Nexus 7, you have a high performance CPU, GPU, large high def display, powerful battery. With your PonePad 2014, you will also receive three external adapters. Uh, the first being in uh, what we call a, a TP-Link high gain 802.11 BGN wireless adapter uh, supporting packet injection. Albeit the Nexus 7 does have an onboard wireless adapter uh, which does support A, B, G, and N. Uh, it does not support packet injection. So uh, you do have two different adapters available for you. So you could use certainly the, uh, the onboard ABGN, uh, but for real true pen testing involving access points, uh, you're really going to want to use that TrendNet um, uh, external adapter. Plug that into the bottom of your pad using the OTG cable that's also supplied. You'll also receive an, a, a high gain Bluetooth adapter. This is the Cena adapter that provides you an opportunity to perform packet injection as well. It's good for up to a thousand feet depending upon the antenna that's used. You also will receive a TrendNet USB Ethernet adapter which is ideal if you want to plug your pwn pad right into a wired network. It should be noted that the pwn pad 2014 has a custom Android front end with one touch pen testing apps. Uh, this is basically where we've taken the Kali Linux distribution and we've created a fork from that. That's what we call Ponex. And then on top of that, what we've done is that we've created 20 plus one touch pen testing uh, shortcuts, if you will, or applications. The idea is that from the home screen of the pwn pad, you can launch Nmap with just a tap of the screen against a network, or it might be Metasploit. We'll actually go through and demonstrate various applications today in this demo, uh, in this video. Uh, you also have with your PwnPad the ability to administer it via a web browser interface. Uh, through the Ponix UI or Pony UI, you launch your web browser and you can actually administer your PwnPad, configuring it in advance for maybe remote deployment. At the same time, you might want to enable one of the covert channels for reverse shell functionality. This is what gives you an opportunity to uh, control and administer your pwn pad, the result of it establishing a connection outbound from a network from where it might be deployed to a designated receiver system. Also with your pwn pad, you have the ability to utilize a cellular connection for control. So with your pwn pad, it does support a 4G LTE GSM SIM card not included. Hardware specs, it's a 4-core Qualcomm, uh, 1.5 gigahertz, uh, Adreno 320, 400 megahertz GPU, memory's 2 gigs, and the internal storage is 32 gigs. Uh, as mentioned before, it does have an onboard 802.11 ABGN uh, wireless adapter. It also has an onboard Bluetooth adapter. Um, the external adapters, obviously, are the TP-Link, the Cena, and the TrendNet. Uh, there's also an onboard GPS, uh, which is ideal if you're looking to uh, capture uh, wireless connectivity, wireless sessions involving Kismet, and uh, basically weighs less than a pound. So let's do this. Let's take a look at the home screen. And let's talk about some of the applications that we have available here. As mentioned, the PwnPad gives you one-touch shortcuts or one-touch pen testing applications grouped together in four individual folders. The first folder we'll talk about will be the Network Tools folder. Within, you might decide to change the MAC address of any one of the interfaces. Uh, very easy to do. As an example, I launch my MAC changer, and I can just choose one of the adapters to change the Mac of, as well as the host name of the pad itself. And uh, what you'll have is an opportunity. Uh, you might actually need to do that before actually embarking on an engagement. Also in the Network Tools folder, you have the ability to run Nmap. So if you have, as an example, if I run Nmap and I have connectivity to a network, whether it's a wired network or a wireless network, the beauty of this application is all I need to do is just select the adapter in question and we'll just ascertain whatever the network might be and Nmap will run looking to identify all the live target systems. Presenting the results it only takes a matter of seconds to do just that. If you're looking to perform the secondary follow-up of a service scan, identifying the live ports of which there might be a thousand common ports, um, we'll actually do that for you as well as identify the, uh, the services in the operating system. Also, if there's a desire to run ma Nmap from the from a shell, uh, or I should say from the command line, nothing stopping you from that. To just simply type Nmap along with your favorite set of switches, whatever they might be, and you can run Nmap from the command line. Let's take a look at some of the other tools here in the Network Tools folder. Um, you have the Strings Watch, fantastic tool when you're looking to uh, rip human readable text um, right off the screen, right off the wire, I should say, uh, as persons are busy traversing the, the wire, visiting various websites, whatever traffic might be passed over the wire, Strings Watch will give you the ability to do just that, basically rip human readable uh, ASCII text and then display it or dump it out to a log file for later review. T-Shark and TCP Dump, uh, pretty self-explanatory. Those are packet capture type tools. Uh, DSNF used in association with Evil AP. 
Bluetooth tools folder. At this time, if there's an intention to use any one of these Bluetooth type of applications, this would be the opportunity to take that Cena adapter, plug it into the bottom of your pad using the supplied OTG cable, and then run either Bluetooth scanner or Blue Log. Uh, with Ubertooth, that is an application that does require the Ubertooth 1 adapter. Uh, that is an optional adapter. We do not supply that. Uh, by default with your pwn pad. It is a bit expensive for some uh, and as a result we didn't want to increase the base price of the pwn pad so uh, and not everyone has a need for using the Ubertooth adapter. So uh, the idea is that if you want to use Ubertooth uh, and you have an Ubertooth 1, excellent. If you want to go out and purchase an Ubertooth 1, you've already got the application installed which will allow you to take advantage of that type of functionality. The wireless tools folder. At this time, this would be an opportunity to take that TP-Link high gain uh, 802.11 BGN adapter, plug that into the bottom of the pad using the supplied OTG cable. And now you can basically perform, say for instance, as an arrow dump, uh, basically looking to capture, I'll choose a note of this, you'll actually look to capture traffic and associated with uh, access points. This will start displaying access points, uh, any sort of uh, client devices that might be connected. Obviously you can sort, uh, further drill down into, uh, into uh, the access points and what might be, tra what might be traversing the wire. Now, if you're looking to run arrow dump from the command line, there's certainly nothing stopping you from doing that. I can certainly type uh, arrow dump here. I'll actually just type that out to show you. Arrow dump ng. There you go. There's the set of switches. So if you want to run arrow dump, lock it down to a channel. Maybe you want to focus on a very specific access point. Um, if you're looking to do some basic testing, looking to see what's visible, you certainly can run arrow dump that way. Um, the entire aircrack ng suite is installed uh, for your use. In the wireless tools folder, you might uh, decide to utilize Kismet. Fantastic tool. If I launch Kismet, um, what I'll do is I'll just bypass the screen here and dive right into the display. Uh, once networks will be seen, any sort of access points will be displayed here on the screen. Take a minute. There they are. Uh, if you want to dive into any sort of further detail as to the clients that are connected, uh, taking a look to see what type of you know, traffic is traversing, uh, this is the ideal tool as a precursor to an attack. It's also ideal. Uh, Kismet is a fantastic uh, IDS. Uh, to be used to identify any sort of rogue access points that are being stood up, um, you know, taking advantage, excuse me, taking advantage of uh, whatever SIDs might be used. Um, let's drop out of Kismet and let's take a look at some of the other tools. Uh, Wi-Fi, probably I, I would have to say my favorite application. Uh, Wi-Fi is ideal when you're looking to crack web uh, authentication, WPA, WPA2. Um, the idea is that you uh, just focus on your focus on your access point. You select your access point in question, and either if it's WEP, um, through six different types of attack, we'll collect uh, the appropriate packets that reflect the, the, the unique or by volume the uh, the IVs. And the idea is that WEP authentication could be cracked in as little as, in my experience, two minutes with the pwn pad. If you're looking to crack WPA or WPA2, then you're looking to gra grab that four-way handshake. By default, the pwn pad will not, uh, will not perform a dictionary attack. That is a rather intensive process. What it will do is create the resultant capture file, and then what you would do is just take that capture file along with the name of the SID in question, and then run it through AirCrack or an online uh, uh, WPA, WPA2 cracking service, and you could uh, go through the process of cracking WPA, WPA2 that way. Assuming, of course, the, the authentication is... Uh, uh, not too complex. Generally, anything greater than 23, mm, 23 characters, and you're, you're not really going to have any sort of success, really, with cracking WPA, uh, WPA2. Also in your wireless tools folder, you have Evil AP. So if your goal might be to stand up a, an access point uh, with whatever SID name of choice, or whether you want to enable the Karma attack, you can easily do that with the pwn pad, becoming a man in the middle, um, basically to try to compromise end users that might be traversing through the pwn pad as they reach out to uh, whatever uh, sites on the internet that the pwn pad is going to allow them access to. Um, attack tools. This gives you an opportunity to run Metasploit, Social Engineering Toolkit, SSL Strip, and EtherCap. EtherCap, packet capturing program. Uh, SSL Strip gives you the ability to take advantage of websites and uh, SSL authentication, uh, looking to grab uh, credentials, whereupon the session will be downgraded unbeknownst to the user, and therefore the credentials may be possibly acquired. Not all websites are vulnerable to this attack. Uh, it's still quite popular, though. Uh, Metasploit should go without saying. I mean, this is the tool that gives you that ability to perform uh, pen testing. If I bring up Metasploit here, you can see uh, earlier I've actually got that up and running already. Uh, one of those random banners that appear, this is Metasploit 493, the open source community edition. Uh, 1,300 plus exploits, almost 350 payloads. Um, basically, have at it, specify your target, uh, your remote host, 
ports, uh, select your payload, your exploit, and uh, obtain shell. Uh, Social Engineering Toolkit, fantastic application by Dave Kennedy, uh, known as Relic, uh, Trusted Sec. Um, with the Social Engineering Toolkit, this gives you the ability to conduct phishing attacks, spear phishing attacks, uh, web page manipulation, cloning of web pages. Um, in association with uh, Metasploit, you also have an opportunity to perform web browser type exploits against end users by sending them an email along with a link in the message body or an attachment. Uh, maybe the goal might be to send someone a, P uh, a PDF, a malicious PDF file that you've created that uh, upon the, the opening uh, the opening of uh, an end user system results in the compromise of that user's desktop, thereby giving you a toehold or a, a, uh, what we would call a pivot point or a beachhead to f uh, subsequently launch further attacks against that network. So that's a pretty good overview of the of the four folders that give you these different applications, these one-touch applications. We also have an admin tools folder at the bottom of the screen. That's what gives you the opportunity to run a log wiper. So if you want to purge your pwn pad of any sort of uh, activity, the result of your use of the pad, as you're using various applications, you're collecting log files along the way. Um, you know, some of that might be intentional, some of it might be unintentional, but the log wiper will ensure that everything is being purged from the pad, basically in between engagements. It's a great way of being able to wipe all, uh, all data. SSH on and off, that gives you the ability to access the pwn pad through an SSH shell. Uh, if enabled, you can just basically um, you know, open up an SSH connection right directly into the pwn pad if desired. Pwn UI, that's what gives you the opportunity to access the pwn pad from a web browser. Here in this particular example, the, might, the goal might be to take your pwn pad and configure it for remote deployment. Uh, actually assign it an IP address, plug it into the wired network, drop it in a closet someplace, and then basically perform penetration testing using your, using your pwn pad as your pivot point. Um, if you're looking to take advantage of the reverse shell functionality, uh, this is the opportunity where you can configure the pwn pad for egress busting. This is where you can actually configure the pad, uh, selecting various ports, and when the pad is placed, or or I should say deployed in a remote network, it will try to bust out of that network looking to make a connection to the designated receiver that you would have specified here prior to uh, the uh, configuration. A lot of other different options here that you can configure with inside the, uh, the Pony UI, but suffice to say, uh, this would be used, again, if, you're, if there's a desire to utilize the Pwn pad for remote deployment. Also, in the Admin Tools folder, you've got your root shell. So, again, this is just an opportunity to gain access to a root shell so that if you want to do, uh, you know, update the Pwn pad, specifically uh, whatever applications that you yourself may have installed uh, outside of what we've already provided, it should be known that, by default, in addition to those 20-plus one-touch applications, there are already a hundred plus other uh, applications covering the spectrum of information gathering, um, penetration testing, vulnerability scanning, both wired wireless networks, a um, hundred plus applications installed. Again, this is a fork from Kali Linux, but if by chance there's something on here that I should say, if by chance there's something not on here, there's certainly nothing stopping you from doing a pseudo app get uh, install and then installing whatever that you want. Uh, you'll also find the opportunity to update your pwn pad easily. We do release on average um, an update fairly frequently, probably a, well, every twice a month I'd have to say we update uh, something with regards to the pwn pad itself. Uh, you always can use that update icon it's, uh, to launch uh, an update process, not just for the Ponex operating system, but also for all the applications that we ourselves uh, maintain as a result of our fork off of Kali. So there you have it, um, the Pwn Pad 2014. Um, by all means, take a visit to www.ponyexpress.com for further information or send an email to sales at ponyexpress.com. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day.